What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a post ban list February 2023 Sword Soul deck profile that's built to be everything that you're going to see in today's metagame. Now if you guys are enjoying these deck profiles make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel but we do a whole 10 videos a week. We have five long videos, five short videos so you guys are gonna get a ton of content. On top of that we do deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, all that good stuff you'll see it right here on the channel so i hope you guys enjoyed today's deck profile and with that let's get right into the deck profile all right so just before we get started in today's deck profile i do want to say that this build right over here is built to essentially be every single deck that you're going to see in today's format so that's kashtara branded tri sprite all those different decks that you guys might see in today's format this deck is essentially built to be all those decks and the really cool thing about this deck is that because the engine is really good going first you obviously can go first but because you can also play so many different non-engine cards this deck can also still be really successful going second so that's a really cool thing about sword soul you guys can see i have a side deck over here that i'm going to discuss briefly with you guys as well in the deck profile but let's get started off we are starting off with three incredible ecclesia over here this card of course going second for you is such a good play starter so i like to play the three ecclesia you could play two honestly i was playing two for a long time but i decided the third one is really important especially when you are forced to go second it's one of those things that always baits in a gate baits a hand trap something like that and at least it's not taking up your normal summon so that's why i like playing the three ecclesia and then the rest of the engine is pretty standard you're playing three moye three long yuan two taies you're playing three emergence as well as one blackout now i was on two blackout for a while this otherwise is kind of pretty much just the standard sword soul ratios but one thing i was doing is i was playing two ecclesia and two blackout two blackout does make a lot of sense because you are playing cards like desires which obviously you can banish the one of blackout if you're playing against a cost or a player and they banish cards from the top of your deck and they banish the one blackout then it kind of becomes an issue you guys can see where i'm coming from there so that's why i think for a while i was playing the two blackout i decided just to play the one now though just because so many hand traps are relevant in today's format you don't necessarily need the blackout to always be winning games right so even though blackout is a very powerful card especially also if it's in your graveyard the banish effect to get an extra token helps you play around cards like Baylor and imperm which is really nice right so it's one of those things where i really like playing the two blackout i just think it makes sense to just play one right now and that's it for the sword soul stuff i don't think i need to explain much more all of it is pretty standard and i'm really happy because in today's format i think the bestials are not as relevant as they were before tier limits of course is very much neutered in today's format which thank god for that right but because of that we can actually afford to play our tenyes again and get a lot of value off of them so we're playing three tenyi ashuna two tenyi adhara as well as two tenyi spirit vishuda all right so we're playing the full package that we used to be playing because now that we're not worried about the bestials too much these cards are insanely powerful vishuda going second is a board breaker for you and that's why i'm saying with this deck you have in engine ways or i guess if you count tenyi as a sword soul engine card i just count it all as one thing right so if you count tenyi as kind of like a worm engine card Card, this card is a board breaker for you so going second it helps you break boards and then of course these are also starters on their own they help you get into cards like boxia help you get into cards like chow fang and so many different cards in your extra deck so that's why i really like the tenies and i'm really happy that the bestials are kind of getting out of the format or just leaving the format because tier limits is gone so now we can play these cards back and it makes this deck very very powerful so the tenies i think you got to be playing these ratios we're playing two desires of course for consistency i wouldn't change this up and then the rest of the deck is non engine and that's what i love about this deck so much is that you can always fit non-engine cards based off of what the format is now based off of today's format i thought these cards over here that i'm going to talk about were the best non-engine cards that you guys can be playing so we're playing three infinite impermanence right here imperm obviously is really good into the mirror match really good into branded really good into kashtura if you're stopping their unicorn plays they have to then have multiple cards in their hand to continue playing so that's why i think imperm is really good same thing with valor valor and imperm kind of do a very similar thing so i really like playing the valor they is also in this deck because it being a level one tuner is also kind of relevant sometimes so i do want to bring that up and i want to talk about that because there's another card that you can substitute valor for but i chose to play valor instead again i'll talk about that in just a second then we're playing three ash blossom ash blossom is really good because branded is a thing so if you ash the branded fusion you're in a good spot it's also still not that bad against something like kashtara it's not bad against the mirror match so this kind of card over here right now ash is actually seeing play again unlike where the tier limit format where it wasn't seeing that much play this card right now was actually very powerful and then we're playing three nibiru of course because nibiru is really good into the mirror match really good into branded and really good into kashtara so you guys can see all of these cards are really valuable against every deck
deck right now in the format, which is really nice. And then lastly, to round off the 40 card main deck, we're playing two cross out designator as well as a one called by the grave. So why are we playing these? Well, like I just said, hand traps are very relevant in today's format. Again, unlike the tier limit format where everyone was on bestials, now everyone is back on hand traps because of Kostura, Branded, Sword Soul, all these kind of decks, right? And because everyone's back on hand traps, you don't necessarily want to be losing to someone hitting you with a Veiler, or hitting you with an Imper, or hitting you with an Ash, right? So for that reason, I thought two cross out designator would be very viable with the one called by the grave because you are playing all of these hand traps that you're going to lose to as well. So it's not like you're playing cross out and then having to fit cards into the deck. You are already going to be playing the cards that you're going to be losing to anyway. So it's not like, again, you're taking up space for it. This card is just one of those cards because you're playing so many hand traps already, you're also going to be protected from them, right? So the two cross out as well as the one called by called by is also really good against something like dimension shifter. So for that reason, I really like the two cross out one called by the grave in the main deck. And that's it for the main deck. Of course, it's 40 cards on the dot. And right here, real quick, I'm just going to talk about the Veiler. So again, I think I explained that Veiler is really good because it is a level one tuner, which can come up. There are times you have to special summon a Vishuda or special summon an Ashuna, normal summon your Veiler if you can't go any other place from there, and then just make a Chi Chao, make a level eight synchro, right? So this is very relevant in that sense. Now, the other card that I was debating that wasn't Veiler in the main deck was playing three Book of Eclipse in the main deck. We all know how powerful Book of Eclipse is in today's format, especially against the Kostura matchup. Kostura locking out your zones can be very detrimental for you. So for that reason, I thought, you know, Book of Eclipse is something that should be in the main deck, but specifically because we're able to play so many hand traps, I think you don't necessarily need the Book of Eclipse because there were times in testing where I would open two hand traps. So let's say you opened Imperm plus Ash, right? Your opponent wouldn't even get to the point in their combo where Book of Eclipse then becomes valuable, if that makes sense. So basically what I'm trying to say here, if you're able to stop your opponent, let's say we're playing against Kashtura, if you're able to stop your opponent from getting into the Shangri-La and the Arise Heart and all these combos, then the Book of Eclipse doesn't do anything in your hand anyways, because you're not letting them get to that point where Book of Eclipse is going to be really valuable. So that's why I just thought the Veiler here, just because of the multi-purpose was pretty cool. So yeah, 40 cards in the main deck. I really like this main deck. The only thing, again, like I've been back and forth about is playing two Ecclesia and two Blackout or three Ecclesia and one Blackout. Right now, I think these ratios are fine. But again, you guys can test it out on your own and see what you guys feel like is a little bit better for yourselves. But other than that, I love the main deck. Let's move on to the extra deck over here. We are playing, of course, the two Chi Chao. We're playing the one Sinister Long One as well as the one Cheng Yang. These are pretty standard ratios. One Baron, of course, which I kind of want to up to two. And I'm going to talk about a card that you guys can cut for the second Baron just in case you're playing as Kostura and you don't want to lose the one Baron you have. Draco Berserker here, of course, I think is really powerful. The one Crimson Blader. So this is the card over here that uh, essentially could be a second Baron if you guys want it to be. Crimson Blader, I thought in theory was just really nice and I kind of want to test it out a little bit more, but I want to talk about it right now because Branded again is coming back into the format and this card was really good into the Branded Sword Soul format because it says that if it destroys a monster by battle, your opponent can not normal or special summon level five or higher monsters during their next turn. So obviously you guys can see how good this is against Branded and how good it is against Kostura because if you can just destroy something by battle, then essentially they're not going to be able to summon any Kostura monsters. Branded opponent is not going to be able to summon any fusion monsters. So in theory, this card is really good. Now in testing, honestly, it hasn't been coming up as much as I want it to come up. So maybe this is something you can cut. This is a card that I would say if you guys want to fit in another card, you guys can cut the Crimson Blader. But in theory, I think this card is pretty good. And then we're playing the Chao Fang as well as the two Boxia and one Yazi. I still really like these ratios. I still wouldn't change these up too much. You guys can see we're not playing the Destrudo anymore. I wanted to continue playing Destrudo, but it just doesn't make sense to play Destrudo when you're taking up spots that could be these hand traps, right? I, I just, that's how I feel because if you're playing, especially up against today's metagame, you really need to be able to go second and you really need to be able to win if you're forced to go second, right? So taking up the Destrudo spots, I didn't really like. Dazi is still pretty good, of course, with the level modulation that's provided with Emergence. So it's still one of those cards that's still very viable. And then we're playing two Monk of the Tenyi, one Land Flinkis, as well as one Lingaribo for your Link monsters. Now, let me break this down a little bit. Lingaribo, obviously, I think you really need to be playing, specifically because if your opponent puts Ibli on your side of the field, you need a way to out the Ibli. So Lingaribo, I think, is really good for that. But if your opponent somehow gets rid of the Lingaribo, let's say through a Diabolos or any other kind of way that they extra deck rip you, essentially, then Land Flinkis becomes a really good second option because all you need to do is like normal summon another monster, use the Ibli and the other card to make a Land Flinkis. Land Flinkis is a non effect monster, which means that if you have a Tenyi in your hand, you can then special summon the Tenyi and start your combos going from there, right? So that's a really cool thing about the Land Flinkis that I really like. And then I'm playing, of course, the two Monk of the Tenyi. I didn't have space for the third one. I don't like Shaman at all. Like, I don't like that card at all. So I guess the other argument is you can cut the Crimson Blader for the third Monk. You can even cut Yazi for a third Monk. I'm just showing you guys different options that you guys can play. But, you know, the standard skeleton 
skeleton blueprint i think would be the same right now for the side deck i just want to talk about this real quick of course the side deck when you guys build it doesn't have to be the exact same i'm just kind of giving you guys a template i think lava golem going second is really good again because you are playing three ecclesia you can afford to use your normal summon on this because you'll have the special summon with this three book of eclipse again if you're not maining it you have to be siding it right so three book of eclipse we're playing the one change of heart i think this card is really good going second one harpy's feather duster as well as three cyclone just back row hate we're playing the third cross out designator if you see that your opponent's on a lot of hand traps i like having the third one just for more protection and then we're playing three rivalry for when we go first especially if there's decks where veiler is not good into it or nibiru is not good into it then you guys can play rivalry if you're going first right so this is just kind of a mock-up side deck it's not something you guys necessarily need to be playing keep in mind if you guys are taking this to your locals think about what your locals metagame is looking like if your locals is all kashtara make sure your side deck is more prepared for just kashtara if your locals is all branded make sure your side deck is prepared for branded etc etc right so again besides a few changes that this deck has maybe like the third monk you cut the crimson or cut the yazi maybe a second baron beside a few changes i think this main deck is pretty much perfect the extra deck again is kind of perfect this is more so just a testing thing you know it can go back and forth with it but i think it's a really powerful card try it out for yourselves and let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that was my take on sword soul for the february 2023 format i will say that there are a couple changes that can be made here and there and i talked about it in the deck profile so of course it all comes down to personal preference but that's the thing that i love about sword soul it's kind of like one of those things where you can customize it how you like as long as you're playing the same skeleton anything can happen with this deck which i think is really really nice right so if you guys did enjoy this video though make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more your content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel but we do a full 10 videos a week we have five long videos five short videos so you guys are going to get a ton of different kinds of content deck profiles do replays combo videos all that good stuff it'll be right here on the channel so i hope you guys enjoyed thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you with that thank you i don't know peace